For this next story, I'm going to keep things simple, because the next few things I'm going to talk about have been covered extensively in various videos on my channel. Ultimately, the close friendship between 600 and Oblock meant that often there would be overlaps in their enemies and the conflicts that they would engage in. And in the year of 2017, it would ultimately go down as one of the most violent years, with Oblock and 600 creating a bloodbath in Southside Chicago. On February the 26th, 2017, 600 members Just Blow, Booker, and Young Famous released their remix to a 21 Savage song called Dirty Glock. The video features all the usual trademarks of a classic drill video and represents 600 in 2017 at their most authentic. And it's a good reminder that at this point, with there having been around half a decade of media attention focused towards Chicago drill, by now, numerous people in and around 600 were global celebrities that young rap fans all over the world would follow religiously. And most of these people were still living, or at least sometimes staying, around their old stomping grounds near the Washington Park and Woodlawn neighborhoods. This video would show just how close 600 was with their closest allies by Oblock, with some of their most famous members hanging around together. At the end, after the music stops, the camera pans over to one Oblock member in particular, and that member was T. Roy. T. Roy is known to many Chiracologists as a legend in his own right. He's an infamous shooter from Oblock and was the best friend of Chicago drill legend King Von. And it's believed that T. Roy was a huge inspiration to King Von, actually teaching him many things about moving in the streets, with the two allegedly going on numerous hits together. To this day, King Von's Instagram still has T. Roy's picture as his profile pic, with the account still bearing his nickname V. Roy that Von began to use in honor of T. Roy after his death. And similarly, on T. Roy's Twitter, his name is still Free King Von, which dates all the way back to 20. 17, when King Von was locked up fighting his murder case, with T. Roy ultimately dying before he could actually see King Von freed. Many Reddit threads can be found discussing the legend of T. Roy and his infamous body count, as well as the alleged combined body count of both T. Roy and King Von. Now, T. Roy himself would be the prime example of don't judge a book by its cover, as he would stand at just around 5 foot 2, but his small stature didn't stop him from getting busy in the street, and with a gun in his hand, he could take down any man of any size. And due to his savage and fearless reputation, T. Roy was beloved in the streets of Oblock. But sadly, his life would be cut short on the 14th of February 2017, when T. Roy was tragically shot dead inside of a convenience store, allegedly by TB, aka Terry Barry, from Taekwon World. Allegedly, it was that same day that T. Roy himself was actually looking to catch TB, as a fellow Taekwon World member named Two Times would later describe in a remix of King Von's song Crazy Story. T. Roy was very close to members of 600, and was known to be very active in the gang war in the streets, which is why many 600 members would take the death of T. Roy so personally. T. Roy's death sent shockwaves all around Oblock, and their allied sets. Whilst his closest friend King Von was in jail at the time, other members still in the streets would choose to step up, pick up their guns. And in reaction to T-Roy's death, Oblock and 600 would join forces under the name OB-600, forming a pact to get revenge for T-Roy. And this would start a long list back-to-back -back revenge killings in his honor, which earned this group of killers from Oblock 600, another nickname for their alliance, Get Back Gang. Oblock 600 members who were closest to T-Roy personally would seek revenge on rival territory and try and kill almost anybody associated with their enemies on site. On the same evening of T-Roy's murder, Booker 600 would post on Twitter warning the public of just how serious a retaliation was coming. And just three months later, in May 2017, members of Get Back Gang would allegedly begin their streak of murders. Lil Ho, real name Warren Denton, was a 44-year-old member of Jaro City. Now, Lil Ho was apparently known as a moneymaker in the area and was allegedly the uncle of 600 Breezy, despite still being from opposing gangs. Due to his age, it's very unlikely that he was involved in the modern-day gang war between the younger members of 600, but simply being from Jaro City would ultimately make him a target of the gang. On the afternoon of the 15th of May, several rounds were fired in the 6100 block of South Eberhardt. Lil Ho, real name Warren Delton, was found lying on the pavement with several deadly gunshot wounds, including to his head, and he was ultimately pronounced dead at the scene. The major incident notification document posted by Chiracologist and watermark enthusiast Chusky the Real would reveal that there were apparently four shooters present at the scene, with one of them standing over Lil Ho when killing him. The 600 member most rumored to have been involved is Makadu, aka Makaduya. He was allegedly spotted on the scene by witnesses wearing jeans and a black hoodie. Interestingly, some Redditors have deeply analyzed the dark reality behind this murder, specifically its connection to 600, as even after Lil Ho's murder, 600 Breezy would be pictured with Makadu, the alleged killer of his own uncle. But Get Back Gang were just getting started, and only seven days later, they would allegedly strike again, this time against their ops that were the closest and arguably the biggest rivals of 600, MOB. 
At around 8 p.m. on the 22nd of May, Jamie Jones, also known as Jarmo from MOB, was driving at the 59th Street in LaSalle in the Washington Park neighborhood when a car pulled up alongside him with somebody shooting him in the chest, back, and arm. The shooters then turned southbound on Yale and fled the scene, and Jarmo was later pronounced dead at the hospital just before midnight at only 27 years old. Rapper Dusky the Man from MOB would pay respects to Jarmo after the news, with prompting Nemo 600 to like the post, undoubtedly an effort to taunt Dusky and MOB for their losses. Investigators would later find out that one of the guns used in this shooting was reportedly the same one used in the Lil Ho murder, linking both crimes to Get Back Gang. And this very gun would later be found in the possession of McAdoo when he was caught later that year in relation to yet another murder case. Due to McAdoo being caught with this murder weapon, it's believed that he was one of the shooters in this crime, which if true, would mean that McAdoo caught two bodies in just one week. Many Shyracologists have also suggested that Cap 12 was another shooter, with it being widely believed that 600 was responsible for this crime. The Get Back Gang had now allegedly killed two of their enemies in seven days, all in retaliation for T-Roy's death, with members from 600 allegedly being involved in both incidents. However, the gang who was most responsible for T-Roy's murder, Taekwon World, had not yet faced any direct consequences. But the Get Back Gang clearly had no plans on stopping, with members like E-Dog tweeting that more Get Backs would be coming in the summer. And indeed, in the next month, Get Back Gang would strike again in another brutal murder. Poppy from Taekwon World was the right-hand man of TB, the man allegedly responsible for killing T-Roy. The two can even be seen in multiple photos together, and they even collaborated on music, landing them Taekwon World's most popular song so far, the aptly titled track Taekwon Way, a song which actually begins with TB dissing most of the major BD sets around the Washington Park and Woodlawn area, saying that he's a 600 killer, Front Street killer, and Savage Squad killer, which is a reference to the label and click started by the Front Street rapper Fredo Santana, as well as saying he's an O-Block killer. Later, Richie Jerk, member of Taekwon World and the brother of FBG rapper Billionaire Black would diss O-Block as well as 600 member Lil Boo. Allegedly, after the shooting that ended up killing T-Roy, the surveillance footage captured Poppy and Richie Jerk coming into the store, apparently even laughing at T-Roy while he was laying on the floor dying. Poppy was just 18 years old at this time, and much like any other teen his age, he worked a day job at a local business to make ends meet. On the 16th of June, Poppy was working his shift as normal at the L&P Candy Warehouse. At around 3 p.m., Poppy had been helping an elderly female customer take her shopping back to the car when a maroon-colored vehicle pulled into the parking lot and a masked man exited the vehicle, beginning to fire an AK-47 type automatic rifle towards Poppy, striking him numerous times, including three times in the head. Poppy was taken to the Stroger Hospital where he was pronounced dead around six hours later. But to make matters worse, the horrific aftermath of the shooting was recorded by another shopper and is actually still circulating on YouTube today. In the clip, which I can't show you here, Poppy's almost lifeless body can be seen struggling whilst members of the public are seen crowding around him, attempting to give him first aid. And meanwhile, the lady who Poppy had been helping with her shopping before the shooting can be seen laying on the floor, screaming in shock. And she'd remain there until the police arrived. This candy store itself is located right next to a freeway, essentially giving the shooters a chance to escape to another part of the city almost instantly. And it's alleged that O-Block member HK, who was the brother of T-Roy himself, was the one who killed Poppy. With this murder allegedly being where HK, whose real name is Hakeem, previously nicknamed Heck, would end up getting his new nickname, HK, an abbreviation to Headshot King due to Poppy being hit in the head numerous times. Unsurprisingly, HK took to the internet to brag about this murder. He was seen flaunting the chain of his big brother, something that members are known to do when they've avenged the death of said person. Further insults and taunting from O-Block members would seemingly implicate HK as the shooter, such as Melly from O-Block visiting the store where Poppy had worked and making a post shouting out HK. A few days later, E-Dog, who would also change his name on Twitter to E-Roy in honor of T-Roy, made a tweet where he compares killing to someone to having sex, which is a creepy post which is actually reminiscent of what C-Day tweeted after the murder of 051 Fathead in 2012. Taekwon World was obviously devastated after Poppy's death, and TB would share to Twitter that he was heartbroken at the news. For Taekwon World, the loss of Poppy was likely equally devastating as the loss of T-Roy was for O-Block and 600, but Get Back Gang weren't done yet, because at this point they likely felt invincible, and this was no longer about getting even. They were killing their ops like it was nothing, and at this point facing zero consequences. Just 12 days later, they would continue their murder spree, this time killing a female affiliate of MOB. White girl, real name Janine Dowell, who also went by the name Janine Charrell, was a 32-year-old woman living in the MOB neighborhood. She's sometimes labeled on internet theories as a setup chick, but I haven't seen any serious evidence of this. In reality, she seemed like a hardworking and fun-loving woman and a mother of three, who would unfortunately become the target of the Get Back Gang due to the neighborhood she lived in and the company she kept. On the 28th of June, Janine was driving in an SUV with another woman named Juliet Washington in the Washington Park neighborhood when they stopped at a red light. At this moment, two shooters approached the vehicle from the 
the sides, shooting into the car, hitting both victims multiple times, killing them before fleeing the scene. And heartbreaking pictures would later circulate, taken at the crime scene as people close to the two victims would learn the tragic news. This time, however, the killers wouldn't ultimately get away, and eventually, McAdoo from 600 and Lil Scud from Oblock would be arrested and charged in this double murder. Newspapers would report how the authorities were still not aware of any motive behind the murders, but noted that both women had grown up in the Washington Park neighborhood. In online rumors, however, one of the alleged motives suggested that White Girl was apparently expected to cooperate in a battery case against someone allied to 600, and McAdoo and Lil Scud were apparently paid to do it as a hit. This is supported by the fact that according to newspapers, McAdoo made 15 calls to a person charged with an aggravated battery against White Girl in the hours before and after the murder. At this point, McAdoo had become implicated in three murders that had taken place within just a few months of each other. But finally, his life as a free man ultimately came to an end. Meanwhile, MOB were outraged about this attack towards their innocent friend, and both White Girl and Jarmo had now been killed as a response to a murder that MOB weren't even involved in. White Girl's murder was later referenced on the track Street to Me by MOB rappers Lil Mo Six Blocker and Ruga. Dooski the Man also made a post dedicated to White Girl promising to kill anyone who was involved in her murder. Post once again liked by Mimo 600. Even Take Capone would eventually condemn McAdoo for these murders in a YouTube live stream when discussing ByteDown's equally disturbing case, claiming that fans praised McAdoo for these murders, yet he seemingly killed two innocent women. Y'all really hate by now, right? And like y'all really like, and I don't take up for neither one of these guys or what they charge for. I don't have nothing positive to say about those charges. But well, I see a lot of people hype up McAdoo, like no shade, no nothing. Like, but people are infatuated with Mac. It's like his charges are already as gruesome. Like, it's 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 almost like people like don't understand the differences between being in a certain situation allegedly and starting a certain situation allegedly. You know what I'm saying? Like I see people with the, all these big, you know, McAdoo campaigns and it's like slandering by down. Like what's more, what is the difference to y'all? You know what I'm saying? Allegedly. These are alleged charges, but they're both gruesome. But it's like y'all obsession with one doesn't carry over to the other. You know what I'm saying? And that's kind of like y'all, like y'all go out and y'all seek McAdoo and y'all fall in love with his persona. It's all type of like. Recently, Trey Five from Oblock has also made a statement against McAdoo for this murder, as he allegedly told police that he heard McAdoo say that he caught someone on 55th and Warbush and that he knew it was White Girl. Whether White Girl's murder is seen as part of the get back for T-Roy or just a paid hit is irrelevant because she was the fourth murder within two months carried out by the same group. With McAdoo being involved in the first two, this murder was clearly a continuation of the gang's relentless killing spree, which had now seemingly broadened to include murder for hire, and sadly, things were still far from done. As next month, Get Back Gang, or the so-called OB600, would commit another double murder, catching two family members of FBG Duck on the very same night. Kobe Mac was the cousin of FBG Duck and a member of the Taekwon world, while FBG Brick was Duck's big brother. See, a lot of don't understand, like, everybody think Duck, like, y'all know Duck, but anybody that really know Duck know me, you know what I'm saying? Okay. And I ain't get my name off rapping, you know what I'm saying? Just something I always had a passion for, you know what I'm saying? I started doing it, but that ain't where I got my name from. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I guess by Duck getting his name from Rabbit being over famous and see me and like, oh, that's Duck brother, but they really know, you know what I'm saying, know what, what I be on this And that's my little brother, you know what I'm saying? The little brother. The little brother, you know, my big little brother. That's what's <laughs> you know what up. Saying? Rick too was very close with Taekwon World and was often seen with TB and other members in his music videos. Moreover, it's rumored that Brick was the very person who actually gave TB T-Roy's location before he was killed. Fans actually believe that this is why Brick was seen pictured with the alleged killers TB and Man Man aka Get Right or Can't Get Right around the time of the murder of T-Roy, with the duo wearing the exact same clothes that they wore when they killed T-Roy. Yet, even in the midst of Get Back Gang's murder spree, Kobe and Brick chose not to stay low-key and out the way. On July the 17th, a block party was being thrown in the 63 block of St. Lawrence, the heart of STL's territory where Brick and Kobe were both in attendance. 
Whilst Brick and Kobe were hanging out on a porch of the party house, a white SUV pulled up and a gunman got out, beginning to approach Kobe, ultimately shooting him multiple times. Brick attempted to escape, but he was then chased into an alley next to the house where he was also shot several times. Both Brick and Kobe would end up dying at the scene, while the shooter returned to the vehicle and fled the scene. According to alleged witnesses, Brick was apparently left slumped over a fence that he had attempted to climb in an effort to escape. Meanwhile, images of Kobe's body laying on the grass in front of the house were released to the public in articles about the crime. Interestingly, the news would describe the 6300 block of the St. Lawrence as a nice, quiet block, seemingly either completely unaware of what was happening in the neighborhood or showing a concerning level of subtle trolling and a viral photo was also shared of FBG Duck and his mother Mama Duck mourning at the scene, with recordings of the aftermath also being released online where Mama Duck could be heard screaming and crying with her grief echoing throughout the neighborhood. Many suspect that O-Block members HK, C-Murder, Trey5, as well as 600 members McAdoo and Cap12 were involved in this hit, with one Redditor arguing that this is almost confirmed. Mama Duck has also talked about the murders in interviews, explaining to Say Cheese how a car came to the party's location, asking where Duck was, with witnesses claiming that Brick actually recognized the person who was in the car, after another car would drive by, followed by immediate shooting, while yet another car was supposedly waiting behind the house to ambush anyone trying to escape. Was a car pulled up? and ask for Duck. Like, yo, Duck out here? And everybody looking like, who is you? They didn't recognize who was in the car. But Brick knew who was in the car, and he linked in there, he was like, oh, what's up? And I kind of figured like, well, who was this person that Brick knew? And if they was on from 39, Kobe would have knew him as well, because Kobe didn't even know who they were, because his words was like, who is you? You know what I'm saying? And after that took place, then that's when, um, from witnesses and people who have told me that, um, posted them in a car waiting in the back behind where they were standing. And then a car came up the one way and they instantly shot Kobe. And Brick tried to run and jump a gate um, and was shot in the back. Um, and he was also, I'm assuming the way his autopsy report was that as he was running towards the back, somebody was back there waiting on him. During an Instagram Live after the O-Block members had been charged with the later murder of FBG Duck, she would even claim that O-Block had nothing to do with Brick and Kobe's murder. They ain't kill Brick and Kobe. Y'all heard it from my mouth and we know so all the internet that's out here talking about all oh, HK did this for that, he ain't do that one. I don't know what he did, but he ain't do Brick and Kobe. And in yet another video, she seems to even insinuate that Brick and Kobe weren't killed by ops at all, but rather someone much closer to them. All of a sudden, the block get empty. Then three minutes later, I'm about to walk away, but see, that could have been some ops, but what f***ed me up? Why ops you know go sit in the back of a of, of a crib that they know brick in front of? And he know the cut. This a new cut. The ops ain't even know about this cut. No, he gonna be right there. I go to this lady house, right? I still see the bullet holes in the gate when I go on 63rd St. Lawrence. And I look at it. These knew Brick was going to jump or try to get away. Now, when they ran up on my cousin, they say he was wrestling with whoever with the gun. And, and, it, and, and that's how he got shot in his face, trying to stop them from shooting at Brick. Now, Brick was shot six times. He was shot twice in the back, twice in the butt, once in the arm. All together, he was shot six, but the last shot was called point blank range under his eye. Right? So that being a knew my son, now he probably got hit as he jumped the gate. He didn't get the face shot until he got to the back and the 
people was waiting right there for him because they knew he was going to jump that gate. Now, what ops you know going to sit there for at least hours? Wait for all the everybody. Wait a minute, this the killer. However, on social media, Mama Duck has also claimed that Cap was one of the other people involved, even stating on an Instagram comment that he has been implicated in killing Brick. Cap and Brick actually had a history of back and forth on Twitter just a month before the murder, and in these tweets, Brick can be seen insulting Cap and claiming that C-Day from 600 has no respect for him. Brick may have actually been touching on something real here, as C-Day famously tweeted in 2013 how the op should have killed Cap instead of Trix, which according to some rumors was due to a love triangle between C-Day, Cap, and a girl that both of them were interested in. However, the tweet could also just be seen as C-Day's way of hinting that Cap was the one who had been hurting the ops the most. Less than an hour after the murders, Cap would post on Twitter a message that could be seen as a rather poor attempt at, an es at establishing an alibi. Although according to some on Reddit, this was actually a twisted pattern that Cap had established. Similar to King Von supposedly always eating cereal to imply that he was a serial killer, in 2019, Cap took to Twitter again to disrespect both brothers, showing that he clearly had a hatred towards them. Brick also had a long history with McAdoo, with one shilling photo from many years ago, showing the two spending time together at the same youth center, with this likely being the time when McAdoo in particular was still very close with 600's ops like MOB, who would become affiliated with SDL, as well as people from SDL, like the female shooter KI, that he was seemingly dating around this time. In the months leading to his murder, Brick would also take to Twitter to tell a story about a previous incident where Rondo had shot him during a fight, claiming that after the shooting, he had choked McAdoo while Inky D and C-Day ran from him. Most recently, Mama Duck would once again give an update on the case, this time giving a bombshell saying that the feds are about to charge two people for the murders of Kobe and Brick, cryptically saying, one of them, we ain't gonna talk about him, but the other one, we're coming for your ass. So yes, they have two suspects in Brick's murder, in Kobe's murder. One of them, we ain't gonna talk about him. But the other one, they coming for your ass, Mr. Postman. Stop killing people, kids, and let God handle them. Stop spying for y'all homies. By this point, Get Back Gang had allegedly murdered up to seven people between May and July of 2017, all in the name of avenging their beloved member T-Roy. However, one man was still at the top of their hit list, the man actually responsible for killing T-Roy, TB, from Taekwon World. And two months later, Get Back Gang would ultimately find who they were looking for. With his right-hand man Poppy and FBG Brick being murdered just months earlier, TB should have seen the warning signs that he was not safe in his area. Just three days before TB's death, E-Dog would post on Twitter claiming get back on the way, just watch. And then, on the morning of the 26th, TB would share to Facebook that he was feeling blessed, a chilling post considering what would come next. At 12.45pm, TB was with a man named Marcus Clark on the 7000 block of South Chapel Avenue, which is literally the same block as the store where T-Roy was killed, showing just how incredibly recklessly TB was still moving, hanging around in the exact same areas where he he had caught his infamous body. In fact, Lil D from 600 would later post messages between him and HK, where HK allegedly let D know that he found out where TB lives. In that very location, TB and his friend were both shot multiple times. The friend Marcus, who is also known as Side from Jaro City, would even receive a headshot, but thankfully survived the incident. Unfortunately, the same couldn't be said for TB. The police documents would show just how brutal TB's murder was when detailing all of his gunshot wounds, and it's likely that a whole magazine was emptied into him. In the police scan audio, it's even said that the shooter's actually reloaded their guns and shot again. TB was ultimately pronounced dead at Northwestern Hospital, just age 21. A crazy coincidence is just how similar the headlines were about T-Roy and TB's deaths were. Just another example of this lifestyle going full circle. Now, it's rumored that the gunmen in this hit were HK and McAdoo, with this crime being the eighth murder that he was associated with in just one year. The police dispatch would also report that one of the shooters had a light complexion, which would apparently fit McAdoo's description, and the duo was seemingly moving together around this time, and they would pose for pictures the following day, clearly in high spirits. Meanwhile, members of Taekwon World would mourn TB's death. In just a few months, two of their most notable members, TB and Poppy, had been killed, allegedly at the hands of Get Back Gang. And since TB's death, they had been commonly referring to him as the T-Roy Slayer, pretty much confirming something that everybody except the police seemingly already knew before his death. The extreme wave of violence that followed T-Roy's death was unheard of. Back-to-back -back murders in broad daylight, all in the span of just a few months. TB sadly made himself a target through his own actions, as well as by taunting his enemies, even after he knew they were after him. And as he chose not to relocate in this war, sadly it caught up with him. But before the year could end, the cycle of violence was not finished. HK himself would tragically lose his life in a completely separate situation in the very place that he would consider home.
The 24th of November 2017 was a day seemingly like any other, with HK hanging around in Parkway Gardens, aka O Block. He was accompanied by 600 members, Lil D and McAdoo, who after a summer of causing terror in the streets, along with HK, had likely all become very close friends. In the CCTV footage that was released from that day, we can see the trio enter the 6436 Tower, one of the blocks inside Parkway Gardens. HK and McAdoo would proceed upstairs, where they saw a man who wasn't from O Block, but was there just visiting somebody that he knew. This man was wearing gold chains, so HK and McAdoo allegedly decided to confront and rob him. Perhaps they thought that the man was likely aware of the reputation of O Block and wouldn't fight back against serious members affiliated with the area, but this turned out to be a big misjudgment. That man would notice a gun in one of their jacket pockets and quickly ran away into one of the apartment units closing the door. HK would try to get in, but the man would then up his legal firearm with the shootout going down between him and HK. HK was ultimately hit two times, once in the thigh, and once in the abdomen. HK and McAdoo then retreated down the stairways, while McAdoo was blindly shooting back in the direction of the apartment unit from around the stairwell doorway. According to a woman who witnessed the whole episode, McAdoo then attempted to get HK down the stairs and out of the building, but eventually he bailed on this attempt to help HK and left the building without him. This is ultimately why many people online have suggested that McAdoo left HK for dead, or even somehow actively contributed to his death. Regardless, soon after this, police would respond to calls of shots being fired within Parkway Gardens. When they arrived, they were informed that HK, real name Hakeem Murray, was the victim of several gunshot wounds. He was transported to the Northwestern Hospital, where he was pronounced dead at 8.53 p.m. In the same year, both the brothers T-Roy and HK had lost their lives to gun violence. Perhaps the death of HK was a wake-up call to some of the 600 members to lay low, because overall, the following year would turn out to be much less eventful. But unfortunately, that didn't mean that the killing was over, and before 2018 would end, we would ultimately see one of the most heinous acts ever in Chicago drill history.